afternoon everyone. Uh, back with the first page of the flower book. Uh, so I've got it here, I've got my things set out, ready to make a lovely pay first page and I originally was going to do forget-me-not but I decided all of a sudden that I was going to do a primrose so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut you straight to me I'm doing the primrose page. Well I'm about to do the first page of my book and I'd really like to do a primrose. So I've got my flower book here and I've opened the page at the at the primrose just to give myself a reference. And what I'm going to do before I even go onto the book at all, I'm going to just paint some of my bonded fabric. So I've got the piece of just a scrap piece of the bonded fabric here. And I've drawn some of the images of the from the primrose, and I'm just going to use my ink tense to put the ink tense there so you can see. I use my ink tense to paint the paint the images up. So I need a nice pale green. Uh, I'll just try it first. It's a bit too dark water it down a bit. I don't particularly want it to be very watery now um, but I do and it doesn't bother me that it's going to go over the lines. The lines are there to give me a good idea of what I'm doing. So I do want a nice fresh green. Um, but I'm just going to paint these in. And of course, because it's bonded on the back, um, I know the I know the water's not getting through to my pressing pad, so that's okay. Just going to give them a paint. I think I'll use another couple of colours on there. I'm going to use a very pale for the rib down the middle. Maybe a bit of white on there. And I'll put some other bits of green on just as a just run it in a bit. And I'm going to carry on and do the rest of my leaves like that. Just going to wet the fabric a little bit. And I'm just going to run those colours in. I'm going to choose that colour. I think I need those two mixed together really to get the best colour for what I'm looking for. Don't want to overuse water because I don't want it to be. I'm going to embroider over these as well, so it's really what I'm aiming for is a bit of a background colour. So a bit less free than the than painting the pages, but still painting them in. It's looking pretty good. They're just doing well. I'll do a primrose. It's got this really nice pale colour. I think that's too yellowy. Right. Actually, I think if I put it near the middle and then run some water in, it'll just pale out. That's the general idea. Use a bit of white and a bit of yellow. That's not too bad. I want that nice primrose colour. Again, I'm not particularly bothering about the lines because I've got a way of doing that once the paint's dry. That's looking quite nice. We've got a bit of a greenish middle. I'm just going to pick that up and just dot it on. 
and a bit of a darker bit going on there. So I'm just going to put the tiniest bit on and let the water take it. I'm going to do the same with this one here. Picking up my white and a little bit of yellow. I'm going to do this bud. And then that has a green, a very pale green calyx. I'm going to use this and this one together. A little bit more yellow. I'm going to do a stem as well this time. And again, I'm going to pick up green, yellow, do the calyx and the stem at the same time. And then back onto the pale yellow for the flower. Oh, a bit dark. Should be fine. And again, I would actually like a bit of the darker colour towards the middle. Make that little the tiniest bit on my brush and I'm letting the water run it in. And a little bit of green. Another leaf. run some water onto the page a bit but I've got the colour right oh, they're coming on wrong all right so I'm gonna get all of these painted and then dry them off I've painted all my bits of flower and leaf. It's still a bit wet, so I'm going to iron it dry now and then finish them off so they're ready to put on the page. I'll just, I'll just iron these dry. It helps to set the colour too. There's not that much water on them really. Remember, I'm still on the backing of the paper, so nothing's sticking to anything yet. Now, what I'm doing next, if I can find my... I've just got so much mess here at the moment, unbelievably. So what I'm going to do is take my permanent pen. This is just a Sharpie Ultra Fine. And I am going to go around and I'm going to draw in my images. So this is nice and dry now. So here with this primrose. I'm drawing in the edges of my images. I'm just going to draw them in. that give the leaf its beautiful wavy edge up the stem into the calyx And draw in the petals.
in the front, the front of the calyx. And then I'm going to just give it some character before doing whatever embroidery I'd like to do on it. You can see now why it wasn't really a bother for the paint to go outside of the drawn lines. Do this one. My last few leaves. Okay, leave it at that and the next thing is to take the backing paper off. Oh, I can give it an iron actually. I'll give it an iron, make sure that's all dry, then I'm going to take the backing paper off. So at this point now I can do a couple of things, I can just cut them out and get them onto my page or I can enhance them with some embroidery and that's what I think I'd like to do. So I'm going to get, I'm going to put my ink tents away. I've got some nice pale yellow on here and I'm just going to stitch on these flowers. And I'm not going to do anything too dramatic. I just want to enhance the colour. I'm just going to make some lines going up through the through the petals. And then I'm not already. Just gonna do straight stitches up through the petals. Because I can do embroidery on this because it's going to be applied to the page whereas if I did the embroidery actually on the page it would show through to the other side. So this is a way of making your pages embroidered while still having the book that was put together with the bonder web which makes the pages very stable. So I'm just taking two or three or four stitches on each on each petal. And I'll show you with this one in its entirety. I should have started with a leaf really. Why didn't I start with a leaf? So I'm going over some of the lines that I've put on the petal. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to sort of doing a bit of long and short. So I don't want them all to be the same size. It's actually quite a good colour. It's just out of my big pile. It's coming on really well.
I don't particularly want to cover all of this in embroidery. I could do, but I need the bundle web to be underneath so that I can apply these to my page. I'll come back to you when I've done a bit more and show you what happens next. I've embroidered all my pieces of leaf and flower. I've put some French knots in the middle of the primroses and some lovely straight stitches. I've done the leaf veins in a pretty olive green. I haven't done that one, it's probably going to be on the background. So the next thing is to cut them out and get them ready for um, putting on the fabric. So the main thing that you need to know is that as long as there's not a huge amount of thread on the back, we can just go and cut those out. If there's a lot of thread on the back, like those two particularly, then I'm going to use another piece of bonder web on top of that to secure all those threads. So I'm just going to cut them out very loosely. Like that. I'm going to cut everything out very loosely actually first. We'll cut all our pieces out. Like this. Move my threads out of the way. Don't know why they're joined together particularly. I think I was just I was just painting them very close, that's all. Okay. So I've got all the individual elements. So on these, where there's not a huge amount of thread on the back, I'm just going to very carefully cut them out around my drawn edge. And because the fabric has been bonded, you are not going to get any frayed threads. So you can cut out as intricate a pattern as you wish. And it doesn't take very long. As you can maybe see, when you're cutting intricate shapes, some people really struggle with it, but actually it's the paper or the fabric that should move, not your scissors. Actually, I've just gone and cut my threads there by accident, but I'm not worried about it. I must have gone over the edge. It doesn't actually matter. Uh, I do this one. There's not much thread on the back of there either. I'm going to be a bit more careful where my threads are going over. So yes, if you're cutting intricate, move your paper or your fabric and just keep cutting straight forward. You shouldn't be having to put your scissors around. It's, it's everything else that moves. Your scissors just cut forward. Okay, and another one. Now this hasn't this has only got the French knot on the back, so I can definitely cut that one out. And then when I've got them all cut out, I can arrange my plant, my primrose plant on the page of the book. It should be very exciting because it's the first new page going in. Okay, we've got a nice primrose there. Um, I'll just turn my iron on. So these pieces that have got a lot of stitching on the back, I'm actually going to re-iron them onto another piece of bond web. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm just going to iron back down onto them and turn them over. 
put a piece of put a piece of bondo web that I know is going to cover them. And the same with this one. I'm going to just cut a piece. It's going to cover it. I don't want to get my iron sticky, nor do I want to put this anywhere. I'm going to iron that piece onto there. Just iron it there like that now. It's going to give it extra bonding. And this one as well. Just want to cut that a bit better than that. Because as I say, I don't want to sticky up my iron or anything else. And that piece there and that piece there. And then I know that that's totally covered in. Okay, my iron's going down on that. Okay, and so now I'm going to cut these ones out that have actually been double bonded. And I've actually still got the paper on, but it doesn't matter, you can take the paper off or not as you wish. However you think is the easiest to do it. And sometimes I'm cutting my black edge off and sometimes I'm not. Again, if I want that back on, I can put it back on. And if I don't want it, sometimes it looks a bit more hand-drawn. And for this one, I'm going to go right up the stem as well. And then I'm going to get these all cut out now anyway. Okay, I've cut all my elements out. I've taken the paper off the back of everything. So now I'm ready to make my arrangement. So I'm just going to push them over there. Open my book. There's no need to take this one out really. I can see exactly where things need to be. So just going to start and do an arrangement of all my little pieces um, and I do want to put some writing on here as well so I'm just going to see how things go now, I didn't I didn't actually embroider on that one because I thought it would be in the background um, I'll just see how and I know though I know I want those ones to be in the foreground so, let's have a look. Should I put that one there? Oh, I think that one. I think that one needs to go there, maybe. And I'm going to swap that one out. So I'll just put them in a bit of a... And then that bit where I actually cut them, I'm going to put one of my other elements over the top. And that'll help to stick that down. Put much about this one here. And there. I think that looks pretty decent so what I'm going to do is start and iron them down I've got my iron on hot again I'm just going to take the ones that are on top of things off leave the leaves where they are so I think they were in the right place I'm just going to iron them straight down onto there I'm just press it. I'm not ironing. Ironing's when you're moving the iron, so I'm just pressing it and letting the heat do its work. 
to bond those leaves onto there. So now I've been able to colour the back with the ink tents. It's been less embroidery, but it's, I'm still embroidering. None of that fabric is going to fray. And it's just a lovely way of putting something together. So I'm going to start and put those other ones on top now. I think that one was going to go there maybe. And you can layer them up. Try that. I can't even remember how I was putting them now. I'll just try it again. I think that one in there. And there. And there. I think that's, I think that's quite nice. So I'm just going to put them all down in one go. Again, pressing with heat, not ironing. Right, I think. That is now a lovely book page. And I'm just going to look for my piece of writing that I would like to go on it. So I know what I'm going to write and there's two ways I can be doing it. I can either write directly on here or I can write on a piece of bonded fabric and then when I'm happy with it I can cut that out and stick it on. And I did do that with... Oh no, I can't find it. Where is it? I did do that with this book. Uh, that's that's directly written on but here I painted it on a separate piece cut it out and bonded it and here separate pieces cut out and bonded on actually I think I want to do it directly here so I'm going to uh, just check my quote again. Um, and it is just the primrose opens wide in spring. I'm going to have to turn around because I'm being a lefty. I need to be at the other angle. And I think and I'm just going to I think I want to do I don't think I just want it written there. I think I'm going to, I'm not quite sure, I'm just going to start somewhere, <laughs> where, okay, I think I know what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do some nice printing, and hope for the rest. And the primrose opens wide in spring. One page completed. I hope that helped you understand how you can make your book really individual. You can paint directly onto your pages. But this is a really nice way of doing it, that you can paint onto your bonded fabric then embroider it and then get them on. And if I wanted to over enhance these even more, I can do. I can I can get my ink tents. Uh, the pencils might be really nice to do it with and then colour them a bit more. I could put more detail in if I want. 
think what I am going to do is I'm just going to thicken these lines up because that just suits me to do that. But I'm quite happy with the way that has come out. If you are worried about how your writing would be, just give it a practice. And in the end, your own writing um, it gives it a, an air of it's authentic, it's authentic. You don't have to be copying somebody else's writing. You don't have to make it look anything. It's, it's your own book and it's your own writing. And there's nothing there's nothing wrong with it. Just if you're worried that it won't be intelligible, just give it a practice. Practice writing your phrase or whatever you want to put on it. Give it a practice. Um, if you thought you weren't going to get it fit on, you can always cut a piece of paper the size of where you're trying to get your phrase in and just practice writing it first until you know that you're going to get it all in the right place. I've just gone over them and thickened the line up a bit. And I'm super happy with that. Super happy. Well, I hope that was good. Here it is. Lovely book with the primroses in it for the first page. I'm really happy with it. Um, I've been working a lot on the quilt, as you know, and I'm pleased to report that it's almost done. I've got about a square of the middle to do, well not the middle, the, near the edge to do, a square near the edge and then two of the half squares. They're the only things that need hand stitching now and after that I'll be on to doing the binding. So the binding, I'll just get it here, oh, lost it. the binding is here. Now this is all I had, this, this brown, old brown sheet. I don't have any more of it and I think there's enough. So what I've gone and done is I've ripped it down into how many? Uh, about six centimetre, six centimetre wide strips and I've just I've just ripped it off. I can't do um, diagonal bias strips because I just don't have enough fabric. So they are just ripped off straight and I'm going to iron them in half. I'll be sewing them round the edge of the quilt and then hemming them by hand onto the back. So that's probably what I'm going to be getting on with next. And I'll probably have that filmed for next week if I if I if I can, um, it's really exciting that it's all coming together. Um, next video will probably be the finish of the blackbird, and I already have more project more projects just queuing up, and that doesn't even include the ones that everybody voted on. I might be doing one of them as a quickie, but I've already got some lovely blue double gauze here. I just got yesterday while I was buying ribbon for, for the lavender workshop. I've got this lovely blue double gauze and I have a feeling that I would really like to to do a kawandi quilt or kawandi style, I'll just say style quilt um, and that's because a friend has been doing them and she's got obsessed with them and she, they're so beautiful and it's a very different style of quilting to the way that we've done in the past or sorry I've done in the past which has been more patchwork in the traditional manner. And so they're really intriguing me and I've got so many scraps. It may be that I will just start and do one of them straight away. But I thought the double gauze would be really nice to sew on. Um, so that might be coming up or I might choose something else. In the meantime, happy stitching everybody. Um, I hope if you are doing a book you're getting on nicely with it and that you've got you're getting your pages ready and now you can see a way of putting your pages together and, and embellishing them with what you want. Um, so bye from Marion's World and I'll see you next time.